Hey guys, Phil Drake here. Today we're gonna talk about a history of photography. The history of photography has roots in a remote antiquity with the discovery of two critical principles that of the camera obscura, image projection and the fact that some substance are visibly altered by exposure to light are discovered by observation. Apart from a very uncertain process used on the Turing Shroud, there are no artifacts or descriptions that indicate that anyone even imagined capturing images with light-sensitive materials before the 18th century. Around 1770, Johann Heinrich Scholz captured cut-out letters on a bottle of light-sensitive slurry but he apparently never thought of making the results durable. Around 1800s, Thomas Wedgwood made the first reliable documented, although unsuccessful attempt at capturing camera images in permanent form. His experiments did produce detailed photographs, but Wedgwood and his associate Humphrey Davy found no way to fix these images. In the mid-1820s, Nisifor Nyepse first managed to fix an image that was captured with a camera, but at least 8 hours or even several days of exposure in the camera were required and the earliest results were very crude. The daguerreotype required only minutes of exposure in the camera and produced clear, finely detailed results. Early History of the Camera a natural phenomenon known as camera obscura or pinhole image can project a reversed image through a small opening onto an opposite surface. The principle may have been known and used in prehistoric times. The earliest known written record of the camera obscura is to be found in Chinese writings called Mazi dated to the 4th century BCE. Until the 16th century, the camera obscura was mainly used to study optics and astronomy, especially to safely watch solar eclipses without damaging their eyes. In the later half of the 16th century, some technical improvements were developed. A beacon wax lens in the opening, first described by Garolamo Cardano in 1550, and diaphragm restricting the aperture. Daniel Barbaro in 1568 gave a brighter, sharper image. In 1558, Giambattista della Porta advised using the camera obscura as a drawing aid in his popular influential books. 1816-1833 Niepce's earliest fixed images Niese could find no way to prevent the coating from darkening all over when it was exposed to light for viewing. Dissensioned with several cells, he turned his attention to light-sensitive organic substances. The oldest surviving photograph of the image formed in a camera was created by Niese in 1826 or 1827. It was made on a polished sheet of pepter, and the light-sensitive substance was a thin coating of bitumen, a naturally occurring petroleum tar, which was dissolved in lavender oil, applied to the surface on the pepter, and allowed to dry before use. After a very long exposure in the camera, traditionally said to be eight hours, but now believed to be several days, the bitumen was substantially hardened in proportion to its exposure to light, that our hardened part could be removed with a solvent, leaving a positive image with light areas represented by hardened bitumen and the dark areas by bare poucher. To see the image plainly, the plate had to be lit and viewed in such a way that the bare metal appeared dark and a bitumen lightly light. In partnership, Niepce and Cologne sur Saon and Lois d'Aguard in Paris refined the bitumen process, substituting a more sensitive resin and a very different post-exposure treatment 
that yielded higher quality and more easily viewed images. Exposure times in the camera, although substantially reduced, were still measured and out. Robert Cornelius was an American pioneer of photography and a lamp manufacturer. Cornelius was born in Philadelphia. His father had immigrated from Amsterdam in 1783 and worked as a silversmith before opening a land manufacturing company. Robert Cornelius attended private school as a youth, taking a particular interest in chemistry. In 1831, he began working for his father, specializing in silver plating and metal polishing. He became so well renowned for his work that shortly after the daguerreotype was invented, Cornelius was approached by Joseph Sexton to create a silver plate for his daguerreotype of Central High School in Philadelphia. It was the meeting that sparked Cornelius' interest in photography. Cornelius' 1839 photograph of himself. The back reads the first light picture ever taken. The Crystal Palace The Crystal Palace was a cast iron and plate glass structure originally built in Hyde Park, London, to house the Great Exhibition of 1851. More than 14,000 exhibitors from around the world gathered in its 90-90,000 square foot exhibition space to display examples of technology developed in the Industrial Revolution. Designed by Joseph Paxton, the Great Exhibition Building was 564 meters long, with an interior height of 39 meters. The invention of the cast plate glass method in 1848 made possible the production of large sheets of cheap but strong glass, and its use in the Crystal Palace created a structure with the greatest area of glass ever seen in a building and astonished visitors with its clear walls and ceilings that did not require interior lights. The name of the building resulted from peace being by the playwright Douglas Gerald, who in July 1850 wrote in a satirical magazine Punch about the forthcoming great exhibition, referring to a palace of very crystal. After the exhibition, it was decided to relocate the palace to an area of South London to be rebuilt in Penge Common at the top of Penge Peak next to Sidemon Hill, an affluent suburb of large villas. It stood there from 1854 until its destruction by fire in 1936. The nearby residential area was renamed Crystal Palace after the famous landmark including the park that surrounds the site home of the Crystal Palace National Sports Center. In 2013, a Chinese developer proposed to rebuild the Crystal Palace, but the developer's 16-month exclusivity agreement with Bromley Conkill to develop its plans was cancelled when it expired in February 2015.